The bids are in. The gavel's dropped. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Wine Bid, we are finally hammered. That's right. This is Wine Bids podcast dedicated to all things wine value, wine auctions, wine retail, and just wine. My name is Jeff Gern here on the Wine Bid marketing team. With me, as always, is Paul Walker, the virtuoso of Napa Valley. That's right. <laughs> our wine expert. And thank you for joining us, Paul. Let me just... Say we're gonna so, now a virtuous. What does that that's mean? right? You keep coming up with these very interesting descriptors. I I, I can't Accurate. wait. That's just what people are calling you. Virtuous of Napa Yeah, Valley. I've got my ear, I've got my ear to the ground. It's it's what's on the street. That's what the okay. street is saying. The valley is talking, oh, and that's okay. what the valley is saying. And, got it. and got it. this is gonna be our recap episode. We're gonna walk through everything that happened this last week in auction. Let's jump right into it. Given what I'm seeing in the current week, like next week's recap is going to be crazy. So essentially, uh, look, the first thing we like to talk about is stuff that had a lot of action on it, where we saw a lot of movement, right? These are the things that have more than, usually more than three or four bids, right? Which isn't, you know, we don't have a ton of stuff that has, I mean, we have a good amount of stuff that has action on it, but not a ton of stuff that really goes above three or four bids because our team prices things so well. At top of the list is we sold uh, 2019 Cape Bread. We had nine of them. We had eight bids and we, we sold through that. I thought that was really interesting to see that cake bread sell through uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, but we were talking about this and it's, you know, mainly because you're going to find it's probably a lot more on the wine list, right? On the secondary right. market, even stuff that's brand new. Oftentimes you don't see sell through. But the, but the thing that, that I thought was really interesting, we had a 97 Dr. H. Uh, Tanish uh, Birkensteller Berkesteller, Badstube, Riesling, Spätlese, which had eight bids taking it from $20 to $52. 26 years of age doesn't seem unreasonable for $50. Bucks. $20 actually seemed like a steal for that. Yeah, it was pretty low to begin. I think it was a super old price and, you know, market obviously took care of that. It did sell back in the day, I think, for, you know, 20 bucks, but that was quite a few years ago. And so obviously it's become much more rare and collectible these days. So I'm not surprised at that, at that increase, but still it's not a, you know, it's not a terrible price for something. 26 year old straight lace. Like yeah. 50 bucks. I think or $52 is a great price. We had a, a half a case of the uh, uh, non-vintage uh, Frederic Savart uh, Brut Premier Cru L'Overture. Eight bids took those from 50 to 66. So we filled through all fifty, all six of those at at, at fifty six dollars. So you see a little bit of a price jump on the uh, Savart Brut. Yeah, uh, I mean it's true. it's great, great wine. The the Savart wines tend to go for a little bit more. The vintage wines, I think, get get some pretty serious prices at auction and obviously at retail. And so I think this this looked like kind of a steal at fifty bucks for the six bottles, but. But, you know, people went after it. And I think it's still reasonable. I think $66, $67 for a bottle before commission isn't, it still isn't terrible because it, that, like I said, at retail, it's, it's probably going for more, uh, probably up in the 75 to 80 range now. But really, really good wines, not very easy to find, not a lot produced and not a lot distributed. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's not surprising. We had eight of these 2017 Alaro Vineyard Estate Chehalem. Chehalem <laughs> Chehalem, Chehalem, Chehalem Mountain, Mountain Pinot Noir. Um, I don't know why that always like trips it's me a, up. Even. Every time I, I heard you say it a bunch of times, and I still, you, you know, we sold through seven of those, uh, or actually we sold through all eight. Uh, started at twenty dollars, uh, sold for about thirty bucks. So yeah, that's another. I think you know, very reasonable Willamette Valley wine as prices of so many other wines, you know, especially Pinot Noir in that in that region of the world are are crazily expensive. So that's uh that's not too bad. And Shayla Mountain is its own appellation. And so I think you're getting pretty serious quality fruit for 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 not too much money. 87 Burgess vintage selection library release Cabernet Sauvignon. We had half a case of those sold through them all. They went for a. They went. I mean, seven bids took about thirty dollars to forty dollars a piece. This is another one. Eighty seven is a phenomenal year in Napa, and yeah. you know, thirty bucks. There was. I mean, even at forty, I still think that's an absolute steal of a price yeah. for a decent eighty seven Napa cab. No, it's true. Burgess never got that much of attention or press. I don't think they got big scores back in the day compared to some of the Howl Mountain neighbors, but. The wines have aged really well, and also the the winery kept 
old vintages and did these various library releases that I think they have other other labels as well that you know they have I think they've done this yeah because I think if you look at the I was looking at the picture because I was kind of curious about this because I think it says 10 year old Cabernet Sauvignon so they must have released it in 97 to you know winery mailing list members or maybe if you went up to the winery you could buy you know 10 year old Burgess and, and I mean it, li it literally says library release right yeah, but it says ten year old Cabernet yeah. Sauvignon on the on the sticker. Yeah. Uh, so they must have released it. I would imagine in ninety seven or maybe in two two thousand or something. When ten years after the release, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, great great wines, very underappreciated, I think, and still great deals, right? That's a great deal for for something from a killer vintage in in the mid eighties. Yeah. Absolutely. Twenty ten, Puffini Arbois Pinot Noir. Not surprising. These Poofany wines always, always seem to get bit up. This one, seven bits took it from sixty dollars to eighty six dollars. This is one yeah. of those things where it's like, you know, I often joke like, like how much longer can this go? Because I feel like every single week I see these in auction. There's always bids, and it always jumps up. You know, twenty, thirty percent, right? In this yeah. case, it jumped up, uh, yeah, almost, almost fifty percent. So forty percent increase in in price on this stuff. Yeah, I'm kind of curious also as to when these particular wines are actually released from the winery, because I don't think we've seen any examples past, I think, maybe the 11. And that was a couple, well, maybe just a year ago or so, and it sold for a little less. So, you know, I think they're super rare. And again, I'm 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 willing to bet that the allocation you know, at retail wherever in the U.S. or even even elsewhere is pretty limited. So, you know, when they do pop up and, you know, what was this? Two, was this a 2010 or 11? Sorry, no, 2010. 2010. Yeah, it's going to get grabbed. You know, there's going to be some 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 competition to, to get it. So I'm not too surprised there. We had a 88 Fajac. This one started at 110, which was a steal at 110, but <laughs> it got bid up by six six bids, took it to 210, nearly doubled in price on the 88 Fajac. Maybe not yeah, surprising, a, I think. 110 are, would have been a steal. Yeah, I think so. It's it's really, really good wine, too. I've had this wine a couple of times. It's been a while, but it's very, very good. It's aged very, very well. And it's still, you know, considerably less than some of its, you know, San Emilion counterparts, especially Angelus. It's far more. And, I mean, it's a higher quality wine. Gets bigger scores, if that matters. But still, Fijak is 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 excellent stuff. And, and it really does age incredibly well and it has quite a following and so you know it's even at, at 210 it's not it's not insane it, you know there's a lot of second growth i think from comparable you know well even 88 right like we've talked about pichon Veron and pichon from from that vintage and and mid 80s vintages they're all they're all a little bit higher than that so i think yeah 210 hammer it's still not it's still not crazy yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I believe, you know, what we see generally is like, so 2020 Fijac, the last offer I got was like 244 a bottle. So 110 for something with that much yeah. age on it, you know, I, I mean, you know, you're looking at 40, yeah, no, sorry, 35 years. <laughs> 210. Yeah. <laughs> Not 110. Well, sorry, 210. What I meant was like at 110, it was just such a steal. Even at 210, it's still a steal when you compare it to like more recent pricing. And I don't think Vizek has on premiered yet with their 2022. So mm -hmm. my guess is it's going to come in at quite a bit higher than the 244, maybe as much as 300 a bottle at this point. We had... A bunch of uh, 2019 Mont uh, Montalena Estate Cabernet Sauvignon, six bids. We had a whole case of that. Six bids took it from 95 to just under 135. You know, again, this is something where it's going to sell on the mailing list uh, for a lot more. So, right. you know, when you see it at under 100, I mean, it, I'm not surprised this gets bids up to, you know, 130, $135. There is a fair amount of other, you know, recent release Napa wines, sort of bigger name, classic Napa properties. And, you know, you mentioned right off the bat, the cake bread, 19 cab, 
And just below this, I think you're probably going to bring up the Chimney Rock as well, which went for reserve, right? It went for like $50, $51, but cost considerably more at the winery and at retail. Well, at think. retail, I mean, I was saying Costco, it's like $90. So, yeah. for, you know, the, for the Chimney Rock. For the Chimney Rock, it's yeah. like 90 bucks at, at Costco on new on new releases when I've seen it there. So, and and we know Costco has some of the lowest margins. So you're going to get the best deal at there. So $50 is a song, even after like buyer's premium, 50 bucks is still a song. Yeah. And yeah, and the Montalina too, I think it looks like according to Seller Tracker, it might be somewhere around one. 55 160 like average retail on release right. and probably yeah. a little bit more at the wineries so yeah not surprising it went for about 135 the other one that was a little bit surprising to me was like the 99 claude Duval cabernet sauvignon we had eight of those and uh sold through all eight those went for like 40 to 41 dollars mm -hmm. right I, I mean not even like like that's one where it's like you've got 24 years of age on this. That's a yeah. phenomenal producer. They produce. I, I love their their wine. Their property yeah. is beautiful too. It's if you ever up in Napa, um, someone told um, me too. I was just thinking about this. The 99 Reserve is supposed to be fantastic. Someone, someone, a friend of ours down the street said that they tasted the 99 Reserve at the winery. I think recently, and they said it was just unbelievably good. So keep an eye out for that too, because even the reserves are are. Or I think are kind of underpriced at auction. I mean, I'm a big fan. I love a lot of their stuff. And anyway, uh, 99, Domaine Bruno uh, Clavier, Chambois Moussigny, La Combe de Oro, Ville Vigne. I know I just totally butchered that like crazy. Six bids took three of them. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. No, it was, it was, you know, I actually knew which wine you were talking about. So was, you didn't destroy it. It's, it's the little victories for me, Paul. It's the little <laughs> victories to get me through the day. Uh, hey, well, this is a little victory for whoever bid on it because 99, yeah, there was this kind of a little string of 99 Burgundy's Redbergs in last week. And yeah, Comme d'Orvo from Clavelier is, you know, it's not, obviously like some of the other producers we see but still for for something from a really really fantastic red vintage i don't think that it was you know it was out of control that it went for 135 so that was that was that was cool to see and you know again these are examples that come and go pretty rarely and you know it's always it's always great to see those wines and i'm sure whoever got them is going to really enjoy them because that's just an awesome vintage. We had this, uh, <laughs> probably the one that had the biggest growth was this 04 Auspices de Bone Merceau. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was yesterday. I mean, 30, it started at 30, it was at $30. $30. $30. I know, 30 bucks for Auspice 04 Merceau Genevieve. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's like, <laughs> I mean, but it did not stay at 30. Six bids no. took it to one hundred and twenty dollars for yeah. a what four hundred percent. That's that's like expected. That's you know it's where it's a case where obviously the wine bids buying market they know what's going on. They're not they're you know it's not like people aren't seeing this. <laughs> so yeah, they, they saw yeah. it and they went crazy. And I sh should say it was it it was vinified at Bouchard, which I think was a detail that was left out of the description of the wine, but it was fortunately on the, on the label, you could see that. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, not surprising. We had this 1993 Ridge Cabernet, which my understanding, I mean, here's my, here's my theory. <laughs> Generic Is Cabernet, they, that's right. Yeah. They bred, they, they bred the Sauvignon and Franc and Ruby out of the grape so it's just cabernet there's nothing else in there but cabernet in that particular grape six bids took it from 55 <laughs> to 110 it's the mystery grape <laughs> we don't we don't know exactly when you put like a large rectangular scaffolding in front of someone and you don't know if that person is a centaur or if it's a human it could be either it's that's the same exactly, thing here you know that's exactly the analogy i was thinking jeff yes like, yes it whether or not be, somebody is a centaur based on a piece of scaffolding that's in place to yeah find. you just see the top you, you see you, you just you see this all you see this all the time on your travels i'm sure <laughs> it happens, happens constantly like yeah. is that like somebody standing behind like a large counter or something you're like could be a centaur 
I don't yeah, know. That's instantly don't my know. my question as to whether or not, yeah, their lower half is a horse or not. Anyway, yeah. Uh, anyway. Where are we going? What are we talking about? What <laughs> I meant? Well, to no. Ask, so that was that the rich Cabernet went for fifty five to, to one ten. Yeah, right? I meant to go look at the back label because I suspect there's probably a reason why it says, and not only you're right too, because not only in the in the large font as we all know, the Ridge labels are very well labeled, I should say, with large font type. It says Cabernet with nothing below it, but they underneath, put the blend underneath the, the blend, the eighty six percent Cabernet, and that's it. Which is, <laughs> it's very strange. Like it's it's very weird. And I think there was another example just below that. Or no, wait a minute. There was there was another example of an older Ridge Cabernet, I think, that was in last week, but it was maybe labeled as Cabernet Sauvignon. And then I can't even remember now. I think, yeah, who knows? We'll have to, that's a mystery. We'll have to figure out what's going on with that. I Like this is, this is something where we need to go to the vineyard and be like, what the heck is going on? Like, what is this? You write it, Sauvignon, Bronc. I'm sure it's Cabernet Sauvignon. I'd be willing to bet that that's what it is. You don't know that. You can't, it doesn't say. You don't know that. It could be any Cabernet. It could be a mixture well, between the two. That's true. As we as we talked about before, Ruby Cabernet was grown on the estate. Uh, yes. Ridge. So. Yes. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, you're right. It could be a, a secret clone that was. Maybe it was like this. Somebody planted like a row of vines and they didn't write down what they had planted. And they're like, what did you plant? And he's like, oh, God, well, what was it? Cabernet. I Cabernet. Oh, I can't remember if it was Sauvignon or Franck. You know, they have me. labs that can test these things, which I, I think Paul Draper would have been aware of back in the at the time. Yeah, but, but you know, he's a busy man. He's very busy. He's <laughs> like, I don't have time to take this to a lab. I can get it in a bottle. We got people who are thirsty. They're parched. <laughs> That's they true. They got, they got a lot of fans. That wires they got a lot, lot of fans. Man. We got to get this in a bottle. What are we going to do? Like, just put Cabernet on there and, and you know, <laughs> we'll figure it out later. We had four bottles of the 09 Rich Cabernet Sauvignon, which fixed bid took it from $70 to $81. Right. So that one, we do know what kind of Cabernet well, this is. And this is also like a baby Montebello, too, because it comes from the Montebello right. vineyard. And so the, the earlier examples may or may not have come from their estate property from the Montebello vineyard. I'm not sure. So... This one, I think these estate cabs are still great deals, you know, for under a hundred bucks. It's phenomenal fruit and great winemaking and, and they age obviously for years. And so you get an example yeah. like this, it's, you know, what is it already 14 years old? And yeah. I, I don't know that I've ever had a bottle of wine from Ridge that I didn't like. Yeah, I think I like I think the, I'm there's something just good. They're you all know? good. Yeah, they're they're and you know, price points and varieties. For every palette, I should say. 2011 Tenuta Sanguido. Guido oh, yeah, the Guido Alberto. That's right. The Guido Alberto. Second one, yeah. label, or no, third, no, second label, <laughs> excuse me. Se of, second of label saucy. saucy. Yeah. Um, is it third second label or we third? Do. Third is Le Di Fesse, right? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. So, long story short, this six bids are from 45 to 67. So I think this is, you know, this is an interesting one to see this climbing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's true because an 11 was a great vintage, I think, for them. I'm not too surprised. I think now I, we were we were chatting. I think that, you know, current release, if you find it at, at a retailer, something like 65 bucks or something, I want to say. Well, it, but, but what's interesting to me is like we saw this in auction in April there were three bottles that sold for $45 a piece, right? And that's, yeah, and that, so that's kind of curious. Honestly, jump up. That's kind of curious. 67. For, yeah. for that short of amount of time, yeah, to jump up to to 67, you're right. It's that on is, a rocket ship to the moon. It's well, on a rocket ship to the moon. You're you're the ones, you know, making invest. You're the investment, wine investment expert. So I'm not going to comment on your... You're speculating. Right, right. I'm the wine investment. 2017, our Pepe Valtellina. This is one of my uh, picks. Superior. Yeah, yeah, and I did. still think it was cheap. Actually, I think there was a bottle. I want to say there was a bottle of reserve in last week that was my pick. But still, that this is, uh, let's call it sommelier friendly wine. What does that mean? Well, I think it is, it's like a, 
sommelier da uh, darling producer there's there's a lot of you know a lot of wines in this category that are sought after by wine buyers at restaurants and you know other collectors and they have a following and this is this is one of them and it's not it's not expensive it's not expensive i'm not familiar with the wines i've just read about them so now i want to uh, drink some no I, yeah now i want to try some of this uh, Twenty nine dollars is, is not crazy for that. No, have to look and out for that. There's there's many many labels uh, from this particular organization, and the reserves go for quite a bit more, as you might expect. But I believe also there are you know different grades as far as like the kinds of Nebbiolo that they produce. Just you know, there's Valtellina Superiore with this ill. Petit Rosso designation, and I think there are others which may be of higher caliber. I can't say for sure, but a lot of labels, a lot of interest, and you know, good scores too. This got a got a big yeah. score from wine enthusiast. Now, if you love Burgundy, <laughs> but you're, I think I know what you're going to mention. If you love Burgundy, especially back vintage Burgundy, but you don't like paying uh, French prices. And you don't like uh, the complication of Burgundy labels. <laughs> Wait, French prices? And, like and, you don't and, want to pay in French francs for old, right, old Burgundy? Right. Is that what you're saying? Right. Well, back in 1973. And, and and you know, uh, the, the labels are also very complicated. You don't understand Burgundy. And you're not hung up by the technical definition of Burgundy. That and it has to. Yeah. yeah. And exactly. you're not hung, you don't have those hangups. Then might I recommend a 1973 Bolio Vineyard Burgundy that uh, had five bids, went from 70 to $85. How was the growing year in Burgundy in 1973? <laughs> well, actually, that's a good question. I don't know if... It's if, relevant to that. I think, yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure if 73 was great in Burgundy or... Uh, Napa, Napa. Probably where this particular <laughs> wine came from, but burgundy, you know, it's it's still actually, I think, kind of cool to find an example from you know that era, as you as we've discussed in this podcast previously. Vintages, you know, very close to this and by other producers are extraordinarily expensive, and I think mostly Cabernet, obviously, but still, whatever this variety may be. It's a cool time capsule from, you know, from a different era in, in the Valley for sure, because you're not going to find this wine grown anywhere now. The only one I'll mention before we start looking at the heavy hitters is a 78 Chateau Cassara Red Blend. Oh, yeah. Which I, you picked. That was one of your picks, right? Oh, I was actually, sorry, I picked that one. Yeah, that yeah, was one yeah, of my yeah. picks. Yeah, right? yeah, that was one of your this picks. Went from 25 to 41. Again, this is the finally hammered effect. If someone from, <laughs> if one of our eight listeners is from Chateau Cassara. <laughs> one of the non-robot listeners. Yes, one of the eight so listeners. That one person that's listening. <laughs> yeah, if the one person who's not a robot uh, in our fan base works at Chateau Cassara, jack up your prices, double everything. <laughs> uh, the auction, the finally hammered effect. We mentioned your wine. There are seven bots that are now very interested in it. And so, you know, you probably jack up your prices just a little bit there. I'm just throwing it out there, Chateau Cassara. Let's take a look at some of the heavy hitters uh, that we had. Sure. Uh, had an auction this last week. We had a lot of really interesting stuff in auction. We had a lot of stuff at the higher price points, obviously. Some of the stuff that I think is particularly interesting, we had 2019 Screaming Eagle Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon Three Bottle Lot OWC. This one sold for $82.95. A mag of 2018 Petrusse sold for mm -hmm. $6,490. And then a bottle of uh, 89 Petrusse sold for $3,610. We had uh, 88 uh, Georges uh, Rumier Bon Mar sold for $3,325. Interesting. Another 18 Petrus sold for $6,245, exactly half of the mag. And then uh, we had a 90 uh, DRC Grand Echezo sold for $2,600 flat. And then a 2013 Macetto Three liter, nice party bottle there. Mm -hmm. Sell yeah. for twenty five ten, right? Serious stuff. So somebody, I mean twenty five ten, but subtract the money you'll save on corkage because you're bringing in one <laughs> bottle, and that's what I think the fair market value of that wine is. It's kind of like when you buy an electric car and they tell you the price, but the price is in consideration of like the the tax credit that you'll get. 
And you're like, what do you mean it costs $4,500 more, right? (laughs) It's the same thing here. Just take whatever that price is and subtract the the excess corkage that you'd be saving on. Yeah, that same could be exact a, thing. That could be a, a, a pretty same steep exact thing. cost at French Laundry or something. <laughs> yeah, of course. But I, I, I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna itemize it per seven fifty, Jeff. I don't think they're gonna get away to, with it. I just, it, I just don't just, think so. Look, even if they did put it on their list, which not every restaurant specifies the seven fifty, <laughs> sometimes they're bad at math. <laughs> right, you know, sometimes they're bad at math. I did notice there was a, there was also, well, yeah, there's a mag of the 01 Macedo that came through. Now that that looked pretty appealing, although much more serious vintage, and so naturally it it was pretty expensive, 1885 for that. I did want to mention a couple other highlights. The uh, Palacios, uh, which uh, oh, the Hermita, the 18, the 18 yeah. sold for 500. Right, our sold no, for six thirty. Yeah, sold for six thirty. The previous high we saw at auction was about five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, the twenty eighteen Rousseau Carmes Chamber Charm Chamber Yeah, there you go. Uh, eight hundred high on record. Previous high was seven fourteen, and that was at another auction house. And then the another Armand Rousseau, the Miles Chambertin, sold for seven hundred. The previous high on record we had was six sixty in April at another auction house. And then actually one that I was watching. Was this eighty four Camus special selection Cabernet Sauvignon? The Camus, yeah, that went for a lot. What that went for a lot. Those those you know late seventies, early eighties special selections are they're special wines, and so they're really they're they're going up and up and up and up, and I think they will continue to for you know for several years. So so special they put it on the label. The uh, <laughs> twenty eighteen out. So they're great. They're great. You got to drink more old Camus, Jeff. It's good wine. I need to. I need someone to gift me more old Camus friends. Sell some of those, you know, Bordeaux futures you keep buying and buy some old wine and drink it instead. You're not going to be old enough to drink 22 Bordeaux, so. I know, right? <laughs> but, but I mean, but look, a man can dream. No, I would not mind getting, I do kind of want to get some of that older Camus if I'm it's being It's really, really good. It's a great one. We had this, I thought this was interesting. 2018 Alcone went for 690. The previous record high was 660 at another auction house. What do you make of the Alcone jumping up? Because I, you know, yes, we, you, I think we're going to hear your your theory about on premium. You're going to, yeah, I keep, yeah, I, I know you're getting tired of me saying this well, over no, I, and over and I over just, again. I just this morning saw a new article in the Spectator. I think James Molworth has his like list of of you know top 22s, and I think Palmer was was one and i know you oh, were so talking about there yesterday and yeah i, I, I guess yeah, palmer's I mean, like the star and it's you know well still I, considered well, still considered reasonable compared to wines like ozone you know what i mean and so because ozone has always been very very expensive because it's you know extremely rare and it's always been super super spendy but palmer up until recently wasn't tremendously expensive it's you know it's it's one of those like superstar margot wines that has always been amazing and now you know it's hard to find it for less than 300 bucks at auction but 18 i don't know 18 ozone at 690 that's not, that doesn't seem too too crazy i think it'll keep keep going up though as you know as time goes by well alson the 2022 on premiere is seven for 739 dollars or 740 right so really? that's a lot yeah so yeah and you don't get it for two years and and you you don't get it for two years and the trend that i've been noticing if you buy it from a crew you don't get it at all yeah if you buy for yeah certain places you don't get it at all (laughs) right but 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 sorry had to say it it, yeah futures are tricky yeah it's It's tricky is it too soon too soon it certainly is for some people but like i i think that i think that like you don't get it you don't get it and you know for a while but I think the other thing is that is that like it comes out at retail and it's the exact same price it was on Premier. Yeah. But so so there's there's really there's no benefit to many of these bottles to buying them on Premier that no. I've seen. Right. And but the, yeah, I, I mean, the way the way the sort of external markets are going these days, it seems like the 22s are just out of control, like incredibly overpriced. They're incredibly overpriced. The ones that I think that, that seem to be the darlings are Cheval Blanc, Le Carmes, Le, Les Carmes Aubryon. Le Carmes Aubryon. Le Carmes Aubryon. You can't buy it. 
That's my rule. Um, uh, sorry, LCHB. How about that? LCHB. Nobody um, uses that acronym. Acronyms are terrible. D- Everybody uses it all the time. You don't Acronyms are for marketing people, not for wine collectors. <laughs> and then the other one, uh, Leo Valbartan, that one got a lot of attention. And one that hasn't come out is uh, Leo Val Las Cas. Yeah. That, that's gotten a lot of attention as well. LLC. It's like triple 100 print. Yeah, LLC. You call it LLC. So what you call it? LLC, yeah. Okay. Uh, we got the 05 Rias. Uh, yeah, that's craziness, man. The Pina. I mean, whatever. We've been talking about the all the Reyes wines forever but the pinot keeps yeah. going up and up and up it's like <laughs> it's just wild it's just wild. prior to prior to this auction the 05 so it went for 615 prior to this the, the high was uh 28 at cost plus world market back in 1992 yep no actually way later than that i would say as late as like 99 2000 this stuff was not even 40 bucks it's probably like 30 yeah Good. probably 29.99 i used to sell it at the wine club years and years ago and and the fonsal at syrah was like that was the 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 tough sell because it was i think it was like 40 bucks and people were like whoa they're like that's a lot you know the chateau neuf at least for the pignon was Actually, it was probably, yeah, it was probably somewhere like 25, 30, 35 bucks. Unbelievable. And then anything else you want to mention before we wrap up? Yeah, I think that, that you know, there's a Batard, there's an 11 uh, Colin Marais Batard, Montrachet hammered at 760. That was, that was pretty exciting. And I think you had mentioned a magnum of Elio Grasso, Runcott Reserva that hammered at 440. It got quite a few bids, actually. So yeah. that was exciting. 17 Scarecrow at 2100. That seemed like a lot to me just because, you know, it was a fire vintage. And I believe, you know, prior and, and later vintages are are higher scoring. So I was I was actually surprised to see that hit 700 a bottle. But anyway. Always, always great to see. Oh yeah, there was 05 uh, Sylvain Catier Nuit Saint Georges the Appalachian wine for 405, which is uh, quite not cheap. Oh, and then yeah, there was an there was an 85 uh, Veuve Clicquot Magnum uh, Reserve, the Gold Label Reserve that hammered at 510, which I thought that was, that was cool. impressive. Great, great stuff, but uh, not 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 it's not really a deal anymore. It used to be pretty pretty reasonable. Now, now not as much. And with that, folks, that concludes our auction recap here on Wine Goods Finally Hammered. My name is Jeff McGurn. This is Paul Walker wishing you happy bidding and uh, cheers. Cheers. Cheers.